Hey, this is Eternal King. So, most of my theories have basically been proven correct on the new champions. Um, I had suggested that printing new cycling champions was probably the worst thing for the game from a power creep perspective, and I think it's exceeded my expectations for how toxic Janna is. Um, so, what I didn't realize upon reading this card is that on play, um, she even if she dies, so like again, this is a play effect. It's not a round start effect. Um, even if she dies, she draws two. So now you might think that that's not you know that powerful, but just to give you a sense, um, the most common line of play with Kindred in Shadow Isles was to play Kindred on four, and then glimpse your Kindred for an additional two spell mana. Um, in response to removal. Like, that was the most common line of play in a Nasus deck, Kindred Nasus, that you've ever seen. Now, Janna, she does that for free, right? So she plays herself, she expects to get removed, snap removed, and in fact is happy to be snap removed because she draws two next turn and she can just replay herself. That makes her the best champion in the game. Um, because, again, uh, we talked about how in LOR, it's increasingly becoming worse to build decks that do something. Um, it's increasingly better to play decks that infinitely cycle out. Because if you can, you know, if you have two options to either play cards that are high commitment and high synergy and do something and have a big, you know, uh, maybe a snowball -y effect, something like Gangplank, for example. Like, think about Gangplank. Gangplank's a 5-4 four for 5 mana. He says that if you meet my condition round after round, I get to do a little AoE damage. And that's Gangplank, and that's how champs have been designed in the past. Janna says, you play me for four mana, I do my effect whether I'm dead, whether I'm alive, and not only uh, will I do my effect if I'm dead, I will do my effect every subsequent turn if I am not removed. So I, you just get a free glimpse every turn. Every single turn. So this deck is basically more card advantage than we've ever seen in LOR and, and, you know, this is, uh, talking about Eternal, Eternal's been a format that's been dominated by Samara and Auction, which is a deck that cycles out very efficiently and is basically better than every other deck already. Now, Janna does that just on the card text alone. Um, so, I think this is the set where I join Grappler and, and leaving LOR. Uh, it, this is kind of the design principle they're going, where it's just, you know, yes, Poro King was mid, but let's, you know, compensate as hard as we can by printing the best 4-mana champion that's ever been printed. You know, Jinx says I draw two cards when I meet my level-up condition. Janna says I draw two cards regardless of whether I'm dead, whether I'm alive. I will draw two cards the subsequent turn. She does everything that Jinx does minus any answers or synergy. She's just a better Jinx in every single way. And you can say that Jinx has quick attack and pushes damage. They don't care about that. You care about the draw on the rocket and, 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 and the kind of the card advantage. Um, which requires you to level her up and build a synergistic deck. Janna does not require that. Her only requirement is that the cards she draws are fleeting and that, again, you know, the cards have to be cheap enough that, you know, you can play them out of hand to storm out. But that's not much of a requirement at all. Like, most people understand how a mana curve is. Put in spells that cost less than three mana, you're golden. Put in creatures that cost less than three mana, you're golden. Like, that's not hard. People know how to do that. Um, what is hard is figuring out an efficient way to deal with Janna when she's just going to glimpse herself every turn that she gets played. And worse than glimpsing herself, her evaluation is actually closer to a 4-mana draw card. Um, so typically you look at something like um, Noxus, right? And like what is card advantage evaluated at traditionally in LOR? And it is, you know, 4-mana. Um, whispered words, right? And, you know, if a condition is met, you get to draw for two, but it is for a four mana card. So she's basically d giving you a free whispers words on death and on each subsequent turn if she remains alive. And if she does die, because she's drawing the subsequent turn for free, there's a very good chance you get to replay her anyway. That's like, I don't see a downside. What is the downside to this new champion? Um... Why would you ever play anything else in the game? Um, personally, I don't know. You think about Echo. Um, Echo only, you know, draws efficiently on level up, which is, again, how champs have been designed in the past. Echo, Jinx, all of that stuff. Uh, Zillion. Um, 
you know, these cards only really draw efficiently on level. But she draws, Jana draws efficiently regardless. She draws efficiently in death. She draws efficiently in life on each subsequent turn. She just draws. She's just a free draw engine. You know, TF draws one card on play. He cycles. She doesn't cycle. She provides pure card advantage to infinity. And I don't know if there is enough tech in the game to stop that as of right now. So for me personally, um, I think this new set is cute. I think it has a certain fan base. I think um, Majin is going to love it. Um, I think the tryhards are going to love it. But I look at Nilla and I look at Jana and I'm like, these are like emblematic of everything I've been preaching about from last season. And in order to compete with Auction Samara, instead of nerfing those cards because people love broken stuff in LOR, they just printed new cards that are more broken. And, and they're just like doubling down on the uh, base on the power creep of champions. Hey, you know what's better than Jinx that you know draws card on level up? A card that draws love, you know, draw a, a card, a champion that draws cards on death and life and every situation, regardless. Jesus, um, yeah. I'm pretty okay <laughs> on LOR at this point, um, if this is the direction. Um, I, I, again, yeah, I think this is probably it for me. Um, I'm going to join Mogwai and Grappler. Um, I'm not going to play other card games, because again, there's a lot of different games out there. But this card itself is just full stop the reason why I will personally stop playing LOR. Like, why would you ever play removal cards and answers if it's always more efficient to just cycle out with these non-committal plays and not only cycle out gain card advantage from non-committal plays like that's the level we're at now where in order for a champion to be good she has to play and grant card advantage not just cycle not just trade one for one into your hand but actually trade two for one into your hand on death which again i think that's the part that i don't get this cannot be a play effect. There's just no way in the world that this can be a play effect. It can be a round start effect. Like, you can just drop all of this. This first line here needs to be dropped. And it can just be this. It needs to be that. Otherwise, this card cannot be playable. Because it's too good otherwise. It can't have both. It can't have its cake and eat it too. It can't be play updraft. It can only be round start updraft. Um, that's my personal opinion. Otherwise, there's no reason to play anything else in the game. Um, there's no answers. There's no counterplay. There's nothing. So... Um, be looking forward to seeing that happen eventually, because again, she can't have it both ways. She can't have the play and the round start. Um, she can either have the play and round start on level up, or she can have, um, the round start and then, you know, the play maybe happens on level up. She can't have both on a base card. You just can't. It's so powerful compared to everything else in the game. Like, it's just like, why do anything else? Um, so for that reason, yeah. Um, like I've said, this is going to be Eternal King's last video until I see something happen here. Um, because, again, if you're a traditional LOR player and you want to be like, hey, I play Vlad, and Vlad just, like, pings some stuff for five mana, and then you look at this and you're just like, oh, hey, I draw uh, infinite card advantage for free uh, with zero synergy. Um, you look at something like this and you're just like, okay, why play the game? So this is Eternal King signing out, possibly for the last time. Um, again, I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade. If you're having fun, that's great. Um, but this just isn't the direction of LOR for me. And it isn't for legacy players, because again, they're dropping off like flies.